Hey guys, welcome back to our project. In this video, we are going to set up the database and create our Mongoose model. So just go to the browser and go to Mongo Add Lab. That's our cloud MongoDB. Just go to MongoDB Add Lab and we need to create a new cluster. Click on the first link. Okay, let me just log in. You might need to sign up if you don't have an account. Let me just log in code.sms.gmail.com next password i don't know click on login fine so here you need to create a new project click on this drop down click on this plus new project the name of the project here file ytube click on next and then the project owner just leave this as default you are the project owner click on create project and that's it click on this build a cluster just choose the free one click on this create a cluster and then the cloud provider just leave this as default aws is fine and then select your region i'll be going for mumbai because i live in india and then cluster tire this is just default the name of the cluster cluster zero that is fine click on create cluster Cool. So it will take around 5 minutes to create a cluster. Meanwhile, let's set up the network and database. So click on this database access. And then click on this add new database user. Cool. Here just put your name. So Sumit. Then enter a password. I'll be going for auto generate secure password. So just click on this. And then just copy the password somewhere. Put it somewhere. So just go to dot env here. Just put it. Cause I need to come back to this .env file in a minute and then just scroll down and click on add user that's it look at this it is deploying our changes so now just go to network access click on this network access click on this add ip address for now just select this allow access from anywhere and then click on confirm the status is pending it is still pending Meanwhile, you just go to a terminal and install the mongoose package because that's the ORM we are going to use. Just go to a terminal. Just create another terminal. I've just hit this plus icon to get a new terminal. Okay. Cool. So just go to server and just install mongoose. Cool. Let's see. The status is still pending. Oh, now active. Just go to database access. And this is deployed. Just go to cluster. And let's see. Oh, yeah, cool. Click on this connect. We need to get the connection URL. Just select this connect your application. And then just copy the URL. Just go to .env file. And let's create a variable. Let's say Mongo URI or url mongo uri equal to this url and now we need to change something so the database user is sumit and the password is the copied password the auto generated password oh. just cut it and put it here nice and then you can change the database name like my first database you can change this but that's fine for me just save this and now let's create a function that will connect our app to database. So just go inside the server folder. Let's create a folder which is config. Okay, inside this config, let's create a file which is db.ts, database.ts. Fine. Okay. Uh huh. Make sure my server is running. Cool. Just close the sidebar. Not bar, sidebar. Okay, so just import the mongoose from mongoose. Let's import the mongoose package from mongoose nice and now let's create a function i'll be going for the arrow function because i love arrow function i love everything connect db is the name of the function it will not get any parameter but this would be an asynchronous function because i'm going to make some asynchronous call inside this function okay so the handle the error inside this asynchronous function just make a try catch block cool so we need to use the mongoose.connect function that will connect our app here you need to pass the URL. So how can you get the URL? Just grab this using process dot 
env dot mongo uri so just copy the key mongo uri or it should be mongo's uri oh db dot ts put it here nice and then after that you need to put some options so just press control and space this will activate the typescript intelligence so just use use create index that is true and then use new url parser which is true and then use find and modify this is also true and then use unified topology this is also true <laughs> that's it and if anything goes wrong just catch the error and log out the error so something like connection error and put the error dot message fine now we have some error here this is <laughs> Oh, it can be undefined. So this is the error from TypeScript. So just use exclamation, exclamation. <laughs> just save this. Cool. I'll be also checking if the connection is already established or not. So for that, just go outside this try catch block and check the connection status. So const connection, which is mongoose dot connection. Cool. So here inside this if block, just check if the connection the ready state is greater than one it means this is connected to database so just log out connected to database and return cool and if it is not one i'll also listen to an event so connection dot on oh on buddy if any error occurs so just listen to the error event if anything goes wrong just log out something like connection failed so log connection failed save this something is wrong oh this is not connect db buddy that's the beauty of typescript look at this the on does not exist on this connect db so just use connection that's it save this and now just export this function i can just use export default export default connect db cool and now we'll just go to server.ts and input this function so at the top i can just call this connect db should be auto imported look at this auto imported from dot config slash db and just call this function and look at this this is connected to database cool and now let's create the schema hey by the way guys if anything goes wrong in your connection just don't panic just read out the message Google this, just go to Stack Overflow, just go to my comment section, do whatever you want. Oh, I'm on the package.json, why? I don't know why I'm on this package.json. Anyway, just close this. And now let's create the schemas. So inside this server, let's create a folder which is models. So what model I really need? Basically, I just need a file, the file model. Just see the deployed version, look at this. If I just upload a file, Let's say this one. Let's say upload. Look at this. What are the fields I need? First of all, I need the file name and then the file format so that I can render this image and then the file size. Cool. Then I need the secure URL and then I need two fields to store the email address. One is for the sender and one is for the receiver. You can also store the timestamps, but that is not needed. Okay. So let's just go to the code and let's create the schema. Inside this model, let's name this file f in capital for the naming convention. Call this a model and it is a class. Cool. So import mongoose from mongoose. Mongoose. Let's create the schema. So const schema is mongoose.schema. Put it here. Let's create the schema. So file schema. This is a new schema. Ah, oh, this is not scheme. This is new schema. Inside the constructor, just pass an object. So file name or first value. This should be a string. So just use types. Why oh, my intelligence is not working? Type is string, and this is required, right? So required is true. Cool. Just put a comma and copy this. So what do we need? We need a secure URL or the URL 
I'll be going for secure URL because I'm gonna store the assets in the Cloudinary, right? So the Cloudinary gives you secure URL. So that's why I'll be putting secure URL. This is just the URL of the file. And then I need the file format. So just again copy this. Uh, the third one is format, format. And the fourth one is the size in bytes. Because again Cloudinary returns the size in bytes. So size in bytes and this is type string okay oh it should not be small string this should be capital string buddy so just the string class good save this nice and then i need a sender which should also be a string but this should not be required because the user might not send the file to the email and then a receiver let's duplicate this receiver save this you can also store the timestamps so to store the timestamps you can just put another object and just use timestamps true timestamps true cool and by the way guys i'm also using typescript so let's use the typescript what i'm gonna do i'm going to create an interface using these fields so interface the name of the interface is i file i for the interface Again, naming convention and it should have all the properties of Mongoose document, right? So just extend the document, not documents, document should be auto imported from Mongoose. Uh, let's see at the top, it is not imported. So just import this document. Cool. So let's just include the fields. So file name, it should be a string. And then secure URL, which should be a string again, size in bytes or byte, bytes. This should be a string format, this should be a string sender, this should be a string again, and the receiver, this should also be a string. But the sender and the receiver is optional so just use this question mark so it means it is optional and now just wrap the model with the typescript and export this so export just default just create the model so mongoose.model here just name of the model is file and the schema i'm going to use is file schema right so just copy the schema and put it here but where is the typescript you can use this typescript as a generic so inside this module just use this angle bracket and just pass the i file interface here oh i file that's it save this cool so our model is ready again we have created a file model here we have just included the file name secure url format size in byte sender and receiver okay and then we have set the types again we have created an interface which has all these properties this will be highly used later in this project and then we have just wrapped this model with typescript and exported this so now i can create the api and test the api so that's it for now in the next part we are going to create the api and the routes so see you in the next video bye